Welcome back everybody, Mike here for ironinfidel.com. And as you can see, we are in the office kind of shop area today because it is like stupid windy outside and you wouldn't be able to hear me talk. But today we are going to be crushing some hearts and making some people angry because we are gonna talk about how there is no such thing as one do-it-all rifle. And I know that's something that a lot of you have probably heard over the years and stores are notorious for telling people Oh, get this, this is a do-it-all rifle. Well, we're gonna challenge that today and we are going to take a look at a bunch of different rifles and we're gonna talk about how a lot of them are really purpose-driven or confined by the limitations of the velocity their barrel can achieve. And hopefully this is gonna help you make an appropriate decision because there are a couple of lengths that do a lot of things really good but they're not really do it all. And remember to check out ironinfidel.com. Christmas is coming up soon. Show somebody that you actually love and care about them by getting them a water bottle to stay hydrated or maybe some fitness gear like some workout bands to show them that you actually care. Of course, link to Iron Infidel will be in the description down below. All right, we're gonna start off with one of my personal favorites and that is the 10 and a half inch. This is my Mark 18 clone that I've had for probably 15 years. It's been rebuilt like three times now because I've got so many rounds through it. So 10 and a half inch barrel. What is this really going to be good for? So if you think about a rifle like this, think about going room to room, door to door, inside of a vehicle, it's easy to wield around, easy to carry, get out there on target. Um, really good thing for close quarters combat, working inside of Bearcats like SWAT vehicles. Even your personal vehicle, you can get this thing in and out of your Toyota Corolla, no problem at all, and get things done with it. The Mark 18, specifically the 10.5 or 10.3, saw a lot of action in the global war on terror. It is still in use out there today by not only special operations unit, but a ton of other units out there in different militaries as well. And overall does a pretty good job inside that like 300 yard range. Once we start getting past that, things start getting a little bit iffy, especially if you're not using the right ammunition in a 10.5 barrel. Another area where something like a 10.5 really does perform is if you wanna run a dedicated suppressor. You think about this, if you add another eight or nine inches here, it's still going to be a very short overall package. However, since this is such a short operating and gas system here, it's going to be very violent on the recoil, at least for a 5.56 setup which means all of your internals in here are going to get beat to death rather quickly. Your gas rings, your extractor springs, your bolt assembly, your buffer spring, all of that stuff is going to last far, far less. I think this is at least the second bolt and carrier group in this pistol, oh, this rifle, I mean, and it has had multiple different buffers and buffer springs in it over the years. So when you get down to something like this short, you're gonna lose a lot of distance, you're gonna lose a lot of velocity, and you are going to cause more wear and tear inside here because of just how violent the operating system in here is going to be since it is such a short system. Now, overall, it's gonna last you guys a very long time, but definitely not a do-it-all rifle. Let's move up a couple inches, something like this 12.5 from Cobalt Kinetics. So, Again, this is going to be very good at maneuverability. It's still very tight, very compact, and it's going to overall give you a little bit better, actually quite a bit better ballistic. So since we've gone up to 12 and a half inches here, we get a lot of that powder burn back. We get much higher velocities than a 10.3, and we get the ability to reach out a little bit further as compared to that 10.3, while still maintaining a good short overall setup awesome for CQB, SWAT operations, coming in and out of vehicles, Bearcats, SWAT vehicles, TAC vehicles, all that good stuff. While still being pretty light, you're gaining some rail space here for all the stuff you're gonna to wanna to put on here. As you can see, I've taken everything off this because it's been in the uh, safe since these just became good to go again. Um, but the 12.5 is kind of starting to get into that sweet spot where you're maximizing your efficiencies and your shortness but gaining some of those velocities back. Still not going to be a do-it-all rifle, but you are getting a little bit more distance out of this thing now. I would be comfortable if you put the right optic on here, taking this out to 500 yards or so on that 12.5, but after that, you're gonna to start to see the ballistics, especially if you're not using good 77 grain stuff, start to fall off the map. And you can make steel go bang ding 
but that doesn't mean you're delivering an effective hit on the enemy if that thing barely has enough to make the steel sound, right? So you have to think about that end delivery at what distance and where you are trying to reach with that distance when you choose your rifle. Another good thing about a 12.5 is it's going to run a little bit lighter on the recoil and you're not going to be doing as much violent damage to your internals here. Your gas rings, all of your springs inside here, your extractor, your ejector, all these things are going to last a little bit longer in 12.5 because it's not gonna take as much gas, it's not gonna be as violent, and overall, it's gonna run just a little bit smoother. So not a do-it-all, it does really close stuff really good, and it does that like 500 and in pretty good when it comes to a 12.5. One of the things that you have to take into account with the previous lengths that we have shown is you either gonna to have to have a pistol variant or an SBR. So between the 10.5, the 11.5, the 12.5, and anything right kind of there, you're not gonna have the ability to do a pin and weld and be 16 overall in length, which we'll get to in a second. So you're either gonna to have to pay the tax stamp and get an SBR or do the pistol thing, which leads us into the next length, and this is kind of a sweet spot for me, and that is going to be something like this 13.9 or a 13.7. This is my Blackout Defense 13.9, and I have to say I absolutely love this. It's a really good length for me to work with since I'm a little bit of a taller guy. But the 13.7 and the 13.9 are the shortest overall barrel length that you can get. And you can pin and weld a muddles device here and be 16 inches overall and not need an SBR and still be able to run a stock on here. Now this is where you start to get a lot of good stuff going on because you're getting back a lot of that velocity. You're really softening up the recoil system in here. You're gaining a lot of that distance back. So I have a 13.9 like this one that's out with a buddy right now and I've got an LPVO on it, and that thing is capable of reaching out to extreme distances for what the rifle actually is. I would have no problem going 750 yards with something like this with capable ammunition, the right optic, in the right conditions. But what does a 13.9 or a 13.7 do for us? If you think about this, it's still very, very wieldy in buildings, in vehicles. It's still easy enough to get this thing up from the center console, work it around, the steering wheel and get out of that car. Or if you have to go through the windshield and you're trying to get this thing up, you can just turn right here, start working and then gain your position. Very good length all around, but still not a do it all rifle. Inside of buildings and tight spaces and mobile homes and a lot of times where police and SWAT guys and military dudes end up operating with tight confined quarters, this is really kind of starting to get to that length where it's about as long as you wanna go. Um, and I know some people may disagree with me, but from my experience, this is kind of where I like to say stop as I'm pretty comfortable using this at certain distances, but I'm really comfortable using it inside of a close quarter situation. Uh, but again, very soft on the recoil. It's gonna be much, much softer on all of your operating components in here. Overall, this is going to last longer. You're not gonna burn your barrel out as fast. You're not gonna burn your bolt and your springs, your buffer and your buffer spring and everything that operates this system out as fast as you will with those shorter lengths and you're getting the shortest overall setup without having to have an SBR as long as you pin and weld the muzzle device. Another good thing about a length like this is you're gaining a lot of that rail space back so you can put all of your things on this whether you want a light laser, PEC 15, whatever it is you can go crazy on it, and it's still very comfortable to grab this thing out here. It's not so short that you're going to be tucked in like this you can still get a good overhand C-clamp grip like that if that is your thing. And overall, it's still going to stay pretty light. I think this rifle without the accessories here is like 6.8 or 6.9 pounds maybe, which is good for the overall setup here. And of course, once you start adding all the rest of the stuff, the weight just goes up and the hand space just goes down. But overall, the 13.9 is one of my personal favorites. All right, next up is a length that I have heard probably called the Dirty Bastard Do-It-All Rifle more often than any other length out there, and that is going to be the 14.5. This is the new Daniel Defense RAS-3 with the full ambi lower and their new rail system on it. Now, the 14.5 is an extremely capable setup. Again, if you're doing the rifle variant with a stock on it, you have to pin and weld the muzzle device. But at 14.5, you are getting a ton of velocity back, a ton of ballistics if you use the right ammunition. And all day, I just took a class, a 14.5 was capable out to 970 yards, 
no problem as long as with, with a proficient user and the right ammo, something like 77 grains, 75 grain Hornady, something really good. Now, the 14.5 is still a great overall length, right? We think about this, it's easy to walk around with, it's pretty light. It's still very maneuverable in vehicles, in residences, things like that. If you're an officer or a SWAT guy, it's not too long, but we're getting to that point where we've got a 14 five inch barrel and we've got a pin and welded muzzle device that's now, this one is picking it over 16 inches in total, but you're kind of getting to that point where this length does a lot really, really good. You can get those distances 600, 700 plus yards out there literally shocked me when this guy was hitting that steel out there and I was using an 18 inch and he was using a 14.5, but you're still maintaining something that you can carry around all day, whether it's slung or not. You can do a lot of up and down. You can do a lot of clearing corners. In and out of a car is still not terrible. You get this thing out of the center console, you're probably not gonna wanna have it muzzle up, right? You're probably gonna wanna again, come stock over the shoulder, clear that steering wheel and you can get out there to go to work. It's pretty hard to get in and out of a vehicle if you're high port or <laughs> high ready because you're likely gonna drag that muzzle across the top of the uh, headboard or hit the door frame or something like that. So still very, very maneuverable. Pull it out of the center console, get it up over the shoulder, over that steering wheel, and you can start going to work out there. But this is where the length starts to, I guess, fall apart if you wanna use this inside if it gets any longer. Once you start stepping up into a 16, things kind of tend to get a little unwieldy. That again, doesn't mean that you can't use all of these lengths for things, right? I think Marines were using like 20 inch rifles in Iraq. Um, but again, let's think purpose driven here when it comes to our rifle lengths. We're gonna get more rail space. We're gonna get a much softer recoiling system here. We don't have to have as powerful of a gas system. Internals are going to last a lot longer in a 14.5 than a 10.5. And overall, still a very good package that does a lot well from inside of a house all the way out to like six, 700 yards and beyond. I know probably the most common length out there is going to be the 16 inch. So this is under Daniel Defense. It is the DDM4 V7. Here we are picking up a lot of length. So you can see how far my arm is out on that. but you're gaining a ton of your velocity and your ballistics back on your chosen ammunition. And you're gonna have the ability to reach much, much further than say 10.5, 14.5 with much more power and impact power, right? All of that powder is gonna start burning. Maybe a little bit isn't, and that's gonna depend on your ammo a little bit, but it kind of sucks to do a lot of CQB with something that's 16 inches or longer. And I say that from experience, you've got a lot of muzzle here. If you're trying to stay tight in things, a lot of times you're gonna find yourself up like this and clearing into corners where you know you can't keep that stock in there and do what you wanna do because of that length, maybe depending on it. Again, my opinion here, a lot of guys have carried 16s and a lot of them tell you you can do it. But when you think about purpose-driven rifles, the 16 inch does distance better than it does, I guess, close quarters combat or CQB stuff. Think about this inside of a car, getting this out of a center console, reaching this up, you're probably already hitting the headboard with that. If you try to go muzzle up, you're definitely hitting the headboard, dragging this across there, picking this up, trying to get it out over the steering wheel. There's just a lot more length here to deal with, um, but still very capable. Um, <laughs> it's not that it won't, it just might not be the best tool for that. But there is a lot of good stuff about the 16. Very soft recoiling easy on the parts in there, gives you a lot of velocity, which gives you a lot of distance back if you wanna take those longer shots. And overall, this is probably the most common rifle length you're gonna find out there today. Uh, the last length we're gonna talk about today is my 18 and a half inch Whisper Pickle SPR. Now, I don't think there's anybody out there in the audience that's gonna to wanna to say, yes, I wanna use this for CQB and I wanna carry this thing around and clear a whole bunch of rooms with it and everything else because not only is it heavy, but it's an SPR, right? It's a special purpose rifle. It's got a big scope on it. You can mount a red dot in the offset there and run this thing. But I can tell you from experience, you get a few rooms into a commercial building and it really sucks to carry something this long and this big. Now, once you're dug in and you need overwatch, heck yeah, you're great. Run your bag, put your bipod legs down, whatever it is, and absolutely go to work with this thing. But 
you're going to pick up a lot of weight when it comes to something this long because the optic is going to weigh four or five times as much as a red dot. Your barrel is going to weigh a lot more. Your rail is going to weigh a lot more. Overall, this rifle is going to have some weight to it. However, you are gaining a ton of distance. We chronographed this with 75 grain Hornaday at 2901 consistently. And this thing has gone out to a thousand yards and it is extremely soft on the recoil. Every part in here is going to last longer because it's operating more like the platform was meant to offer or meant to operate in a 20 inch platform. And this is an 18. So this is much closer to the original design. Very soft on the recoil system, very soft on the bolt, very soft on the gas rings, and it's going to last forever. But think about having this in a vehicle, especially if your stock is out, trying to get this out of the console and then work that huge barrel around, then get this thing acquired, get out of the car or muzzle up. It just does not lend itself well to CQB. Again, not saying you can't do that with it. Uh, people carried M1 Garands in World War II and got a lot of business done, but purpose driven. This is definitely not something I want to run around with in a commercial structure, clearing room after room after room. It's going to wear you at, and it's a little bit unwieldy. So again, not saying that any of these can't do certain things. And I'm sure somebody out there is going to say they have the do it all from CQB to 1200 yard rifle. And that mix may be out there, right? But when it comes to everything that I've seen and used in this life and my work experience, I haven't found one that does all of those things perfectly not a do it all. It's always purpose driven. Now I'm sure some of you may disagree with me. And if you do, I'm curious to know in the comments what you think a do it all rifle rig or length is, because for me, the 14.5 seems to be about that mix of where it does a lot of things really good, but still doesn't handle certain things well. And if yours has been different, let me know down below in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, keep doing it out there and I'll see you on the next one.